people of God can you scream a better amen can you shout a better amen and people of God if you love the Lord like I do we're gonna read um, some scriptures together if you don't mind so we're gonna read the book of first John would you quickly open to the book of first John chapter 4 what is the book of first John yeah chapter 4 verse 7 we read the first John chapter 4 verse 7 if you don't mind yes first John chapter 4 verse 7 first John 4 verse 7 yes sir um, before we go to first John 4 verse 7 please let's go to John itself 15 verse 13 and then we'll go to that um, John 15 verse 13 yes church like a mass choir the count of three can we read together one to go greater love had no man than this that a man should lay down his life for his friends great God first John chapter 4 verse 7 beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that love it is born of God and know it God somebody help me say love somebody help me shall say love Father, in the next few minutes, we ask that you open our eyes to all that we need to know. Let there be none of any man but all of you. Let a lover of the Lord thunder a louder amen. I wish your amen will sound louder than it just did right now. Let your amen thunder louder like you really meant it. People of God, lift up your right hand and thunder. Say, I love the word of God. It is the compass for my living. Say, I love the word of God. Say, is the strength of my desire. Say, I love the word of God. Is the reason for my existence. Father, Father, as I speak your word, let there be spirit and life. Let a lover of God thunder a louder amen. Please, before you take your seat, look around your circle and tell everyone congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. And once you do that, you can take your seat in the presence of God, but celebrate the Lord together. Can we celebrate the Lord together? Celebrate the Lord together. People of God, greater love had no man. People of God, the Easter story, the Easter resurrection, everything about Easter, people of God, is a love story. Greater love had no man that this than a man should lay down his life for his friends. People of God, his own life his own life for his friends people of god and I, 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 I am very certain that the bible needed to create that scenario of laying down your life for your friends not your family members because some people will say yeah family members yeah i can try i can try but the bible decided to paint it in this picture that a man laid down his life for his friends that is he chose to die so that his friends can live he chose to die so that his friends can find value people of god but then again, he doesn't leave us there. People of God then instructively came from one of those. See, no matter how you talk about the power of resurrection, and you don't look, look at the power that made him do what he did. People of God, love drove him. Love was the reason why he died. Love is the essence. Love, it was just all about love. Did you hear what I just said? It's all about love. And then remember, there was this guy, every time he spoke, every time he was talking, there was this guy that actually put his head on his chest all the time. People of God, if you go and read everything, that guy, that guy is just a love person. That guy that put his head on his chest, that is John the Beloved. People of God, everything the guy wrote. So he understood the heartbeat of Jesus that spoke about love. So he understood it. This is a, I mean, and then he comes again in First John and begins to tell us, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and he that is born of God. I thought we read it together. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So people of God, it is not enough to know that he loved. The responsibility is now pushing on us to love one another. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, love one another. You see, there's so much talk about God everywhere, but there's no love. There's no, people of God, I have looked at humanity and I find out that in fact, the only thing that opens the door for wickedness is lack of love. The 
only reason why families that were that were loving, that were smiling, that were laughing all of a sudden becomes a theater of warfare because love is missing. The only reason why parents or parents will abandon their children or children abandon their parents as they were is because there is no love. People of God, the only reason why we will be in the office and a, 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 a colleague is fighting another colleague with so much lies and so much viciousness is because there is no love. Am I communicating? And people of God, how do we claim people of God that we love others but yet we speak ill of them? How do you call people friends but you are the one that betray them the most? Am I communicating? There is no love. And, and a lot of people are in that space where they're saying, Pastor, you don't know love has failed me. Love has truly failed me. People of God, love has truly failed me. And there is no way. I thought to myself, how do we talk about Easter without even talking about love? Are you ready for this conversation? So people of God, in the next few seconds or the next few minutes, I, I just want to share with you my heart. Why did love fail me? Why did love fail me? Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, why did love fail me? I want you to say it again like a minute. Say, why did love fail me? Say it again to your neighbor. Say, why did love fail me? So I'm, I'm going to share with us seven thoughts. And once I'm done with the seven thoughts, just to bring a lot of clarity on the concept and the way, you know, when the Bible says that God is love, God is love. Somebody, I need you to understand that. God is what? Love. God is what? Love. God is love. And I'm going to start with this example. And, 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 and once I'm done with the example, I will say what I want to say. Um, God is love. Amen? God is love. God is love. Amen? So I want to borrow. Um, let me borrow three of you. Just three of you. Three of you should come. God is love. Praise God. Who is the biggest? Um, okay, so, um, so you'll be in the middle. So come over here. You'll be in the middle. Middle. Praise God. So for one second, he is God. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So, I do know that you understand this. Let me just run through it. That when we say God is love, Right? You're simply trying to say, love is God. That is what it means. So, if I say to him, right, I love you. And I do not want to use the word God. I would want to use the word love. I can equally substitute it with, I God you. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So, it will be a lie. If my love is passed through God and it doesn't stand the test of time. So I, I can no longer say to anyone, I love you if my love doesn't reflect God. So if I say, I, 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 God, you, I, God, you, that means between you and I, there is God. So imagine me saying to someone, I love you. That is, I'm putting God into the matter because God has assumed the place and say, I am love. So, and then I'm saying to God, I'm saying, you know, I, I got you. And God is in the middle looking at me because he's looking at my heart. And he knows that what is in my heart is not really love. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you understand that between him and him, what is in the middle is God. So, it's better not to say it than to say it and not realize that you're putting God in the matter. So, every time you say to people, I love you, you are saying, God, bear me witness. I'm not the one. It's in the Bible. Every time you say to people, I love you, you're simply putting God into the... You don't know why God is punishing you. No, but because it's true. You, you have no idea how many times you brought God into a matter 
that does not concern God. Because you were saying to someone, I love you. And, and God is saying, why are you lying? I'm not in this thing. You know you really don't love this guy. You don't love this. You, 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 you want to sleep with them. And you're saying, I love you. That is no love. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. And so please, let's not even confuse it. Love and lust is not the same. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Lost covets. Love covers. Lost violates. Love values. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. And so you need to understand that between this person and the... So every time I want to say to people, I love you, I'm putting God in the middle. How would he want me to treat you? So, between you and I, I am seeing God. So, this is what it is. Please stand this way. Stand this way. So, I'm saying to you, he's saying to you, I love you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm saying to you, I love you. So, one day he decides to behave in a very nasty way manner. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it ceases to be love if I respond to him out of what he's done. Because I've already involved God in the matter. So I'm going to be responding to him the way he wants me to respond. Because he was by himself and I brought him into the matter. So, I do not treat him the way he has treated me because I am depending on him to tell me how to love him, not him determining the temperature of my love. So, at this point, love ceases to be a feeling so because I am no longer feeling what he's doing. But I am convinced because of who is in my life. So it's a conviction. So he's going to be nasty some days. I am going to feel bad some days. But it doesn't change the fact that I still love you. Because feeling and love are not the same. Feelings can change, but love needs to be your strongest conviction. Am I communicating? So the next time you are opening your better not say it. Better not say it. Because there are some of you single men here. This week you have said you have said to 40 women. I love you, 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 I love you. You are a liar. You are a liar. And all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. So you need to bring God. In this matter, people of God, until you love in spite of, you cannot love in fullness. Did you hear what I just said? Can I say it again? Until you've been able to love in spite of, you can never love in fullness. So, my love, you know how the young people say love is blind? <laughs> love is not blind. The Bible says, greater love had no man than this, that a man should lay down his father. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did he not know that we are sinners? So I don't know the kind of love you're saying that love is blind. Love is not blind. It sees. It sees. So in the place of love, I know that he has bad mouth. Are you getting?
getting what I'm saying. But I am saying, if he could go all the way to die for a useless me, my love should be enough to let him know that in spite of the bad mouth you have, I am going to demonstrate to you what it means for God to love a man. But there is no way, people of God, when God wants to show a man that he loves him, he uses another man. So the only way for me to show this person that God loves him is to be the love that God wants him to see. Am I communicating? Because we can't talk about the Easter story. So we can keep shouting him and shouting him. And then at the end of the day, we'll go out of here. I hate, I will not raise a church that is wicked. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. I will not raise a church that do not care. When people walk into our offices, you don't have love. They will sit in your office from morning till night, requesting for something that you should just sign and let them go. You will not sign it. You will sit down there, go out and come. You like it when people just line up and they suffer around you. That's not love. Do you know how big Jesus was? Do you know that he went out and began to wash the feet of his disciples? Let me say this. And I pray you understand it. So the Spirit of God was speaking to me. And he said, Why do you think when, it, when we came to the book of Galatians and the Bible began to see the fruit of the Spirit is love? I know you can go on and on. And begin to talk about love, joy, you know. And Now, notice this. I'm going somewhere. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another. Even as I have loved you. Then he comes and says, if there be prophecies, all of these things, giftings of the spirit, they will fade. All of them will fade. But one thing that will remain is love. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in the midst of it all, scriptures deliberately pushes love in the front burner. People of God, you know the, way, the reason why people fight against themselves in the office and people want to undo themselves, poison, this one, that one, that one, everything is going on is because of, the reason why you are even praying the prayers, you are praying affliction and other, because one wicked person will not allow you drink water and, and keep your cup, but I'm, I'm coming to that later on, and all of that, but I need you to understand that love that cannot love in spite of is not yet prepared to love in fullness. Am I communicating? So don't forget, every time I say I love you, I have implicated God in the matter. So I can't even talk to you the way I want because anything I want to talk to you, I will pass it through God. I can't react to you the way I want because I, I know I have said I love you and I, and I, want, to, I want to curse you out. You, you require some cursing out. You know, require for, you know that moment where you say the only thing that fits you is to look at you. And just say, even when you don't say anything, and just point at the head and see, people of God. But then again, God is standing between me and you. So imagine me saying to you, because I want to talk to you, and God is here, and I'm trying to raise my hand, and God is here saying to you, Have you heard no correct? You are an idiot. When God is here. So the consciousness of knowing that God is in my marriage. Watching your mouth and watching your spouse's mouth. The consciousness of knowing that God is at the office. Watching the way you address a subordinate. Or call God is there. Am I communicating? Now, I need to hear this. I'm already saying a lot by introduction. But let me say to you, the posture of love does not seek to receive, it seeks to give. The reason why love will fail and might fail some of you is that the posture you have about love is receive. I want to receive a, 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 a pastor. A, a, you know the Bible says, wife uh, submits unto your own husband. So, 
and the uh, husbands love your wife. So that's the point. My own is not to love. Yeah? My own is to do what? Eh? Submit. Uh, my husband's own is to do what? Love. And the question I'm asking, can you even submit without love? And so there is nobody, it is their primary responsibility to love and the other person will be there to receive love. This is the reason why you get into relationship. Let me tell you something. It's better I love and get hurt rather than getting hurt for not loving because I have built my love stamina. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I've been able to stretch my love muscles and I don't need to talk to everyone who goes to gym knows what this means and all that you stretch your, like you, you, are, you are stretching your muscles and then you are gaining a lot of fitness. So it is important that you keep that at the back of your mind. So the posture of love that makes you sit in the place of I am here to receive. Call me. Call me. You are the one that they used to call. You are the one that their bad days must be remembered. You are the one that they have to buy gifts for. You are the one that needs to be told and everything has to be about you. Let me say something to you. If you belong to that class, with all due respect, you are manipulative and you are extremely narcissistic. Because we, this is Easter. It's about the love. No, it can't be about you. No, it cannot be about you. The world does not revolve around you. The world does not revolve around you. You are the only one they have to ask, is there a problem? You are the only one they have to ask, did I do anything? You are the only one. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Everything shouldn't be about you. Love that postures to, oh my goodness. Look at, imagine that, that, just picture in your mind where you have two persons who truly love themselves and posturing to give. Their mindset is to give. I'm here to give value, to give love, to give care, to give. And then before I care for you, you care for me. Before I care for you, you care for me. You, before I care for you, you care for me. You care for, before I care for you. Some people are throwing away their faces. Yes. <laughs> Pastor, those things, do they still happen in this world? It can happen, no? I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Because the more you build a brand of selfishness and self-conceitedness around your love, look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor, Easter is a love story. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I want you to posture to give love, not just to receive love. If you understand it, can you turn that a louder? Amen. And people of God never ever believe that what you now I want you to hear this. Just be picking it as it is coming. I want you to know that love is a seed. Did you hear me? Love is a seed. You might not necessarily reap it where you sowed it. And understand the Bible says you will reap what you have sown not where you have sown. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So this, this thing I'm saying is for those who say, Pastor, I loved so much. I loved this person so much, but this person mistreated me, took me for granted. No, not their loss. What you have done is a seed. You have sown a seed that will come back and find you. Let me tell you, the love of Jesus, that singular death that he died in a place called Israel is the reason why the world is standing still. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Can I shock you first that the people he died for are still expecting the Messiah? Israel, they are still expecting Messiah. But they are not largely Christians. They are not Christians. 
They don't believe in this thing that we believe in. Jesus is coming. No, Israel people, they don't, they are not, they are not Christian. People of God. So the seed was sown. Even the people themselves, they don't even believe in the love seed, but all around the world. All around the world. Jesus is glorified. Jesus is magnified. And so don't always look for harvest where you sowed your love seed. Sir, having said this, let me say the reason why love failed most of us is because you believe that love is very transactional. I'm in business. This is, this is very transactional. If I do this, you will do this. If I do this one, you do this other one. If I make this other one, love that becomes transactional. I want you to know, must be ready for business rules. And that is losses and gain. And so you don't want to know that you are losing in your love journey. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Please let me say this. I, I, I know I'm saying too many things at the same time. But let me remind you, the reason why love will fail most persons is the Bible says, walk in love. Somebody say, walk in love. Say it again like you mean it. Say, walk in love. Say it again. Say, walk in love. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us. So, I want you to know, please bring your hand, that love is a walk. It is not a destination. So, if I have a love walk with one, someone, he might not, we might not arrive when we want to arrive. But always remember that this is a love walk. So, you don't meet someone today and you want them to become who you want them to be overnight. It is a walk. As you begin the walk with them, they will learn how to throw away selfishness. Give them some time. It is called love walk. Give them some time. They will realize that, you know what? I am beginning to let go. There are people who, the way they grew up, they were a lot in their house. They were like 1,000 in their house. And so when it is time to eat, no, I'm telling you how selfishness is bred. When it's time to eat, they bring out, put make gari and put it in one big bowl. Put soup in one big bowl and lay it out there. Survival of the fittest. So, and that is how some people grew up. Unknown to them, that, that thing begins to impact. Yeah. So wherever they go to, it is who will get it first, who will drag this thing first, who will do that, and, and they don't know that is how they begin. So they get into a relationship. They are still competing with the people they should be loving. So you must understand that love in itself is a walk, and you must be patient to go on this walk, especially those who are married. It is a walk. Oh. It is a walk. Sometimes you ask yourself, will we reach there? I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Will we reach there? Because you just keep taking the walk. You keep taking the, There are days your leg will hurt you. But the idea behind it, understand that love is not a destination. It is a walk. Help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep walking. I need you to say it again to your neighbor. Say, keep walking. Say it again like you understand it. Say, keep walking. And so if you do not understand that love is a walk, you might just have gotten into someone's life. I expect that destination now. I expect that destination now. Arrive at where I want you to arrive. Become who I want you to become. Make a... No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. And besides, let me say what I say to people, especially anyone, people who are single here. Don't believe you will enter into anybody's life to change the person. Don't enter people's life to change. If when you are dating or cutting and you tell yourself, man, it doesn't fit into my values, it doesn't fit into my... Please take a walk. You cannot change the person. It's only God that will change the person. Until my wife had an encounter with God all by herself, she did not change. 
Oh yes, it was God that encountered, you know, so pastor, this thing that you're talking about and all of that, did you not know that, uh, the, I'm sure if you have read her book, you'll say, did you not know she was like that? I knew. I won't lie. I knew. I knew. So, but in my mind, I was telling myself I was a great man of God. That, is it not me that pray for people and they will change and all of that? Then this one that I won't marry, that will not. And I, I had, I had, I had, my ginger was out of the world. It's just, just, just one night prayer. I will turn this one around. That's how we married. I did one night. I did two. I did three. I did four. It did not change. It did not change. And I need you to understand. Until I had to go back to the one that brought Eve. I said, I beg. This is your will. Be nobody's true. You just have to go back to God. Because you can't change a human being. You can't change a human being. So you just have to trust God to be able to do that. So as you are trying to do someone and you're looking at it, ah, I'm seeing this thing. Oh, better. I remember that day my wife walked into my room. She was weeping. I said, the Holy Spirit has convicted me. She kept crying and I kept saying, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. Calm down. I am fine. No problem. She kept crying. It is only God that can change. And that from that day till today, that was where the change, because God had to convey. But if you are here, but believing, no. If I shout, you keep quiet. Yeah. Don't try it. Don't do it too hard, though. Because this person you are shouting and they are keeping quiet. Maybe when they will respond, this bottle they will respond with. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Love is what? A walk. Gently take that walk. Take that love walk. It will be better in time. Take a love walk. Sometimes it will be a walk in patience. Sometimes it will be a walk in joy. Sometimes it will be a walk in... Be, don't be too predictable. You are too predictable and then you're, the people around you know you're too predictable. No, 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 she's upset now. He's upset. We know. Why you come and show yourself? Then even when you come, you show yourself. Sometimes let some things go. Everything is not over analysis. Everything is not about. And listen, do you know that he gave us his life? But have you thought about how he doesn't micromanage us? He loves you that way, but he doesn't micromanage you. Let not your loved ones see the worst of your emotions. I say it all the time. Don't let those you say you love the most be the ones that will say, where has it ever happened that an attitude of love is the one that chokes the people that he says he loves? Am I communicating? So your way, my way of trying to say, when you love people, let them be themselves. Let them be themselves. Am I communicating? And people of God, I need you to also understand that for you, to be able to be in that space where you say, love did not fail me. Understand that the flesh needs to die. The ultimate proof of love was when flesh died. Don't come here and say, that's it, Pastor. <laughs> this is your preaching. I like it. Oh. I like it. All these people that I have. If flesh is too active in your life, you are ruining the pattern of God for love. Jesus was nailed on the cross. Was nailed to the cross. Flesh died. Flesh died. Am I communicating? People of God, flesh has to die. You don't come around the people you love and then you say, let me tell you the worst thing I have discovered about some people. You know, I don't know how you can be in the wrong and still think you are so right. You are so wrong but yet you are acting like you are so, you know how it is that you offend people and you are the first one that will cry. How is that even possible? So you can't, you can't be that way. So what you find out what some people believe that love is, they do your, their flesh is really very active. 
and you, you are lying to the persons. You are being, you are scheming, you are, you are manipulating. They, they, they want to be in charge of you deceitfully. So flesh is alive. Allow flesh to die. Pastor, you know, I thought that that guy loved, loved me. We have not heard from him. Let's hear from him first. You know, that guy just woke up in the middle. He just broke up the distance. Keep quiet. Let's hear from him. When we hear from him, we'll know what the, what truly happened. Because if continually you are the person you talk, and you can, and I say this all the time, especially for people who are dating and all of that, understand your role, especially when you come into a man's life, whether you are married or you are fiancing or whatever, and all of that. Find out what is my role. What is my role? Please, what is my role? Jesus came to die, not as God, even though he was God. Jesus came to die, not as Holy Spirit, even though he was Holy Spirit. He came to die as the Son of God. That's the way he came to die. Know your role and stay there. Did you hear what I just said? People of God, if you are a wife, be a wife. Don't be your husband's mother. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Love him like his wife. Don't love him like his mother. If you are giving an advice, give an advice like a wife. Even if he does something wrong, don't mock him like the way his mother will mock him. When they are telling you something, you will not hear. Where your head is, is what I don't know. He will soon tell you where his head is. I don't know whether you're getting what I am saying. So please understand that this is the reason why that love has failed a lot of people. Find out your role. Stay there. Be loving in that your role. This is my assignment. This is what God wants me to do. And this is where I'm going to relate from. This is where I'm going to do business from. Am I communicating? Let me say this to you. The reason why love failed you is because you thought that love had an expiry date. Love is not the heart pulsating heartbeat you have. That one can expire. Love is not the butterflies you feel because that one can expire. People of God, love is tested when it meets an unlovable situation. The true test of love is when it meets an unlovable situation. So don't ever say you love people until they give you reasons why you should not love them. Did you hear what I just said? Don't ever claim that you love people until they give you reasons why you should not love them. Am I communicating? And people of God, let me say it again. He loved us and all he did was to give us value. He loved us. All he did was to give us value. He was the, he's the bridegroom of the church. Preparing the church. To hand over the church without spot or wrinkle. Don't say you love people if you're not bringing any value. What value are you bringing? As you love him. I'm not saying what money are you bringing. Because nowadays the, the rule of the uh, Gen Z's is uh, what are you bringing to the table. Yes. So I'm not talking about that kind of what are you bringing to the table. I'm saying that you must have value you're giving people. Love that is empty is no love. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. It's no love. You must be. Why love failed is that because you continue to say I love you but it was never bringing any value. Am I communicating? Help me look at your neighbor for me and ask your neighbor what value are you bringing I need you to say it again. Ask your neighbor like a minute. Say, what value are you bringing? Can you say it again like you understand it? Say, what value are you bringing? And I'm going to tidy on this note. I want you to understand. There are seasons when love will cause you to bleed. But it doesn't stop it from being love. Wow. Pastor, does 
Love makes people bleed. There are days when love will cause you to bleed. But it doesn't make it not love. Let me say this thing. It's important. I need to drop this one. Let me tell you. The reason why love fails some people is that you don't understand that the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. It is not the same thing as be a lover of yourself. Have enough love that you can love another person. Not build an attention of love on yourself. The Bible says in the last day, men shall become lovers of themselves. So they're going to, life is going to be about them. They're going to pay attention to themselves. They're going to, everything will be about them. No. Don't be a lover of yourself. Like it is me, myself and I and all of that. Everything is not insult. Everything is not disrespect. Everything is not, uh, why are you talking to me like that? Everything is not, calm down. It's not that serious. So we have a lot of people who have loved themselves to the point that they become lovers of themselves. So if you have become your own lover, you don't need another person to love you because you have already set your own standards about how you should be loved. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So sir, understand that yes, I mean, I have to always say to people, love yourself. Love yourself enough to know when someone is deceiving you and that's not love. Love yourself enough to put yourself, because let me tell you, you're going to meet, go out there, you're going to meet a lot of people who don't think you're worth it. You're going to meet a lot of people who are going to fight. You come up and say, I know what God has put inside of me. I don't know, for their wickedness, they will never see anything in you. Or they will see other, all the wrong things. They never come to you to tell you you've done well until you make one mistake. They never celebrate one thing about you. They never celebrate one good thing. They'll just be waiting to the day that they will hear. And people of God, anybody waiting for your downfall, they will wait forever. I wish that that your amen will thunder loud. But however, it is important for you to love yourself healthy enough to be in a relationship and know what you don't want. Yes, love yourself enough to be in a relationship and know, no, no, this is quite abusive. No, I don't think I, 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 am, I am going to take that, you know. And I, no, love yourself enough, but don't become a lover of yourself in that you don't make room for some things to go wrong. Let me say it until you've been able, I said it before, until you've been able to love in spite of, you will never love to the fullness. So love says, I know this is wrong. I know that... I know this is painful, but I'm going to love you in spite of this. Let me tidy up by going back to these people again. Don't forget that between the sayer of I love you and the receiver of I love you, there is God. So, whatever I am going to do to this person, I must be sure that him that I have brought into this matter will approve of it because he will see me either to punish me or to bless me. So love becomes more serious than this because God calls himself for God is love. People of God, this is why anything that God puts his hand into, the devil will want to counterfeit it. Love is one thing the devil has described, defined, mesmerized, you know, nonsense, nonsensicalized. You know, just for it to remove that, that sanctity that it comes with. So, sir, never forget. Easter is a love story. For all the people who send to their wives, I love you, remember this. For every time you have to tell a people, I love you, Remember that this is watching your love. Just the same way they were putting that money into the treasury and Jesus stood there. I think he has said it again. I love you. You can imagine 
when you are saying then I love you to somebody you just want to sleep with. You wish you never heard what I said today. You have heard it. And you're sending, I love you. You are the only thing that matters to me. I, I, I love you enough to marry you. Ooh. Jesus is there. He's watching you. I love you. Look at that one. You are trying to deceive them with this thing you are saying. You will hear from me. So, sir, remember. Love that is from God is God-breathed. God monitored and God delivered. Does it make sense? Can you rise on your feet wherever you are? Would you lift up your two hands wherever you are? Let the love of God be shed upon our hearts. Lord, read our hearts of every bitterness. Father, whatever that has affected and made people's heart numb and cold in the place of love, let it all be removed. Lord, we want to love the way Christ wants us to love. Love that pulls people out of weaknesses. Love that lifts. Love that defends. Love that guards. If you understand this, can you thunder a louder amen? Were you blessed being in fourth service today? And you are going to indulge me next Sunday in the fourth service. Indulge me this last time and then we'll continue with the way as I'm, I want to speak on the seven strongholds of the mind. In the fourth service, again, seven strongholds of the mind. That creates, I mean, remember we're saying the battle is over. So, but we're going to be speaking that now. Did it make sense? Yes, All right. Can you put together your offerings, your tithe and your partnership? Put together your offerings, your tithe, and your partnership and raise it before the Lord. In streams of joy, we stand to give to God. Because we're offering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Make it a wave offering. Would you let me say this all the time? Would you rise on your feet? It is a protocol of the house for us to rise to give to God. Rise on your feet with your offerings and make it a wave offering. Make it a wave offering. Make it a wave offering. I just heard a witness. Tell God what you want to see this week. Open your mouth, just mention it. Mention it, mention it. Mention it. Just mention what you want to see this week. Let it be said. Let the hand of the Lord be strong upon you. And I decree as you have said it. So shall it be in your life. Let your amen thunder louder.